Rover wheels are nice for driving around the surface of Carbon or other celestial bodies. And it turns out you can even escape Gilly with them. But you can't really get off the surface of Carbon because you have to be on the ground to gain speed and once in the air you'll lose speed until you fall back to the ground. But what if we gave the wheels something to cling on to even when in the air? Introducing the Caterpillar engine. This engine uses large rover wheels to drive a propeller shaft and it can be used to propel an aircraft. It's completely 100% stock and it can be freely attached to different airframes. So let's now detach the propeller from the craft and spin it up. In contrast to normal stock propellers which use reaction wheels and trim controls to spin up, this one can be controlled directly by using the driving keys without having to switch back and forth to and from the propeller. Now let's pop the fairing open and see what it looks like from the inside. The propeller shaft mainly consists of a fairing which is surrounded by lots and lots of rover wheels and it's held in place by normal RCS thrust or thermometer bearings. To fly the engine I made this plane here, which I dubbed the butterfly. Yeah, I apologize for the ugly looks of it. It's clearly form from function, especially the propeller was an ugly beast. But this design was simply the one that worked the best for me. The 40 rover wheels are entirely powered by the solar panels. There are no hidden RTGs or batteries inside this plane. They would be too heavy anyway to keep the plane in the air for any significant amount of time. The only real alternative to solar panels is using fuel cells, which I'll come back to later. Because of the low power output of the engine, the plane needs huge wings to provide the necessary lift to keep the hefty engine airborne. At such slow speeds, we are talking about as slow as 25 meters per second, the wings are quite close to stalling and the control surfaces aren't very effective. Combined with the huge wingspan of this plane, this makes for a horribly slow roll rate. Therefore, it is both safer and faster to steer the plane with a rudder instead of the normal method of first banking the plane using the ailerons and then turning using the elevators. It might hurt to watch as I fail to avoid the vehicle assembly building and turn too late and by that clip one wing. But as it turns out, there's enough headroom to fly with a wing clipped. Let's see if I can land this thing. Yeah, it's definitely not easy to fly. And the fact that it lacks a part of its wing is definitely not helping here. But I got there in the end. Being a solar plane obviously brings the danger of having not enough solar power to be able to fly. This prevents us from doing barrel rolls and loops in this plane. When the plane's upside is facing away from the sun it loses power almost immediately and stalls as a consequence. To remedy this I built this fuel cell powered variant. It can do loops and barrel rolls given enough altitude. Well, mostly. The last thing I want to try out with this is the high altitude performance. As climbing to a high altitude with this plane would take ages, I strapped two Juno engines to the bottom of the wings which helped me get up there in a reasonable amount of time. Then at 8000 meters I can simply detach them and see how the plane does with just its propeller. Now while this testing and some other footage is showing, I'll shut up and let you enjoy some music.